That's the only, you know, the only thing. You did a weird look at the end of it, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> you don't question, don't so. shoot. <laughs> 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 the end. Bruno, how did you get your start in the wine business? Never meant to be in this kind of business, but uh, the life turned a little bit different. Uh, my grandfather left me a small vineyard, uh, something like two, three hundred plants. At that time, nobody wanted to work in that vineyard. For us, it was nothing, just don't let it go to waste. First year, we did something called a wine, and uh, at the end of the harvest, there was just a place uh, at the university for winemaking in porridge. So I went in, and after a year of that, I saw myself actually doing quite okay in this kind of work. And the story goes on from there. So that was 2003. In 2004, we did something like a few thousand bottles. 2005, doubled that. And then in 2006, we changed to our label, new logo. And I think that, the, that year we planted the new vineyard and uh, then we started Pro. Considering now you're in your fifth vintage, what is your annual production? We are now around 40 to 50,000 bottles, depending on, on year, you know. Since we're doing uh, uh, organic farming, some years a little bit better on yields, some years, some years you lose a little bit of diseases, but uh, you know, that's, that's for now. But since we planted a new big vineyard, I think in the next few years we'll grow up to 80, 90,000 bottles. I have to say though, it really is refreshing to meet somebody who is first generation and doing it from nothing. And in fact, virtually no knowledge but a few hundred plants and going to school. We are so used to seeing second, third, fourth generation yeah. and being passed down in the family business. This is really nice. Yeah, but you know, this in, in Istria, being a second, third, fourth generation tends to give you a little bit of limitations because Oh, my, when you try to do something, your grandfather, your father, someone says, oh, this is not the way, don't risk it. And when I'm doing my job, I'm always working on, like, on, on, on the edge. And always, you have, if you want to do big stuff, if you want to have great wines, you have to carry them on the edge. And so that's my, my head start on the other guys that have two, three generations uh, of winemaking before them. They have something be, uh, on me that's for sure, but I'm learning uh, a steep learning curve every day. And then when I went to start to, to, the, to, to the university, I was a kid and all the winemakers wanted to share the knowledge with me. Now it's a little bit different, but there are still people with whom I can exchange words and everything. But before I, I picked, you know, lots of people, brains and, and uh, took what, what, what was good for me. The word on the street about you is that you're young, you're passionate, you're innovative, a little crazy. But tell me about the uh, innovative side. What are you doing to be innovative and to be at the front of winemaking in Croatia? You know, we are, the, we are using something like a combination of uh, tradition. In history, uh, tradition in winemaking means acacia barrels and uh, in the combining with, with modern technologies. So we are using a little bit longer maceration on the whites, uh, combining with barrel fermentation uh, in the acacia barrels. Then with the reds, we are doing uh, longer macerations, uh, 15, 20, 25, 30 days, depending. So, you know, as I said, I'm looking uh, all the ways and exploring all different opportunities and uh, playing around a little bit. So that's, I think, the innovation, you know, and plus that's my style. I, I, as I said, I always, you always walk on, on, on a little bit of the edge. So depending on how steep the edge is. Bruno, it is absolutely a pleasure to meet somebody who is really building it from the beginning on their own. It's refreshing. It's scary. It's exciting. Congratulations. Thank you.